sucking all you want. Going harder than me. And that's how you assert dominance. Hey what's up guys, it's Jake aka Tag, and today we're going to be hitting you up with this 4.3 Elixir Golem deck. This is one of those decks that excelled end of season on the last day. It's a great deck for challenges and tournament standard as well. There's absolutely no feasible way for you to lose the log bait when you have Tornado and Log. You're going to beat Hog Rider every single game because you have Lumberjack, you've got Night Witch, and you've also got Tornado. So it's essentially against your religion to lose those two matchups. So you'll be winning every single matchup against all those other Golem Cannon Cart decks. Cannon Cart really doesn't have the DPS of a Lumberjack or a Night Witch, so you're always going to kill their tank first, and then that will allow you to work on their supporting units while they're still working away on your goal. Tornado has pretty awesome synergy with Baby Dragon, especially on defense, and it will ensure that you don't lose to any Hog Riders. The one huge weakness of this deck is if your opponent starts with Pump and you don't, there's really no great way that you can punish them. Despite that one predicament that you might have with Pumps, there's so many other great matchups with this deck that it really outweighs that one bad probability. I really think that this deck just hard counters half the meta, so let's go jump straight into some GC games and let's assert some dominance. Alright guys, so we got our first game of the day against Fair Flap right now. We're gonna be dropping our Collector in the middle. We're gonna see what's up. Is he even gonna drop cards? There's, okay, so he's got a P.E.K.K.A. I mean, I don't really understand why he ended up dropping the P.E.K.K.A. early on. We're just gonna drop in the Night Witch. Now if we defend this, he won't have P.E.K.K.A. in cycle. We can drop a Golem and then kind of just win the game. So it was interesting to see a P.E.K.K.A. at the start of the game. He's going pretty hard in the paint though. This is where the utilization of Tornado is just amazing. We're gonna log everything back as well. And notice how cleanly we clean up this push. Not even a single hit on the tower from that bandit. Frees up a lot of Elixir for us and now we can just end up going in for another uh, pump. The Dark Goblin's not gonna do too much. With tank decks you really wanna actually eat some tower damage so then you're able to um, so then in the long run you're gonna be able to win the game by just formulating a massive push. Unfortunately, my Night Witch did not target the Dark Goblin first and we're gonna face the consequences of that, but this game is looking really good for us. My unit's behind my Golem even if he drops a P.E.K.K.A. will decimate his P.E.K.K.A. and then my supporting units will win the game. I'm really not looking to do all my damage with the Golem itself. The supporting units behind the Golem are what's gonna make this Golem so strong. The Baby Dragon in conjunction with NATO, the Lumberjack, the Mega Minion, it's pretty amazing. I'm not gonna drop the Lumberjack right now, I'm just gonna wait and see what he does. Now we're gonna tornado everything together. Tornado is actually gonna be hitting the Night Witch as well. And this is looking really good for me. I have a Raged Baby Dragon, the Baby Dragon is raging, it is pissed off right now. And it is burping on the tower like a true sir. <laughs> oh man, that's so much damage. Feels great. So we're gonna pump up again, we're gonna go drop a log, and then we're gonna drop our Night Witch. And we're in a phenomenal situation, he's gonna be dropping his own Night Witch again. We're gonna go drop our Golem in the back, the Golem will tank for the Night Witch, and then we can drop all of our supporting units behind the Golem again. And he looks like he's just in a rush right now, he wants the he wants to bring the pain train to me, but it's not gonna happen. We're dropping the Lumberjack, we're gonna be logging the Dark Goblin yet again, and this is just looking, looking really great. We're just going to start spamming the bridge because you know that's what you do with Golem and uh, <laughs> yeah this game is just about over. We can go tornado everything to the tower so then it splashes along with the baby dragon. Baby dragon is just hitting everything out here right now guys. We're going to go drop our Golem on defense. That's another big thing that people don't really realize. Golem is so healthy and it's such a health intensive card that it can soak up so many hits. And Golem and Giant, a lot of times when you really need to defend for the last few seconds, use that on defense and it can really save you in a lot of situations. Alright guys, we got another game in Jungle Arena, so hopefully the lightning isn't too strong for us today. I hate the lightning in there, it's just, it's probably the most annoying feature in Clash Royale right now. I, I kind of want them to remove it. Ah, oh, three Musketeers at the start when I cycle Lumberjack, that's, that's a feels bad moment if I've ever seen one. So, we're going to respond with the Golem, the Golem will actually eat up a lot of those Musketeer hits. And we're probably going to eat the left-hand lane. We kind of have to. We have to eat a whole health musketeer because we want to make sure that we actually have some HP left on our uh, on our golem. And we're going to be dropping a baby dragon really soon. I feel like baby dragon is definitely the maneuver. The bats are going to be just devastating those minions. And notice how, because we ate that damage, we're even tower damage on both sides. 
Definitely the better play in this situation. The golem is going to get on top of the tower. However, he has log. I don't know why you would have log in a three musketeer deck. Uh, it beats beats log bait anyways. Um, so that was weird seeing that. And we're going to be having to drop our lumberjack right now as well. Because we knew that those minions were actually going to still survive. And then if the miner is tanking for a little bit longer, that would have been tower for him. So definitely made the accurate play right there. He's going to be dropping a knight on defense. And this is going to be decent for us. I don't think he has Miner in Cycle, so I'm going to go in for a Collector because remember, he used his Miner plus Minion Horde. So there's no way for him to punish this unless he's actually packing another big spell in a Three Musketeer deck, which is pretty much unheard of. So we're, in a, we're definitely in a predicament. He pumped up. We don't have any way to punish that. So we're going to have to start our Golem, I believe. So this is what I'm thinking. If we end up starting our Night Witch, right? Then he just drops his three musketeers and he kind of wrecks us. Notice how he actually had to split his musketeers because he doesn't know if we have a huge spell or not. Little to his uh, knowledge, we don't have a huge spell. So if he dropped it in one lane, it would have been very hard for us to deal with. And we're going to be dropping uh, so many units right now. We actually have to make sure that we do not get three crowned or lose that left hand tower. So we're going to be dropping our lumberjack. And then... Honestly, I think the Golemites are just going to wreck him. The Golemites will end up taking that tower. We still have a huge push going on the right-hand lane. There is nothing for him to do to deal with that. We're going to go drop our Golem again. And he's going to pump up, actually. That was an interesting maneuver. I could have actually Golemed in the left-hand side if I knew that he was going to pump up. Oh my gosh, look at the damage on the three crown. This is crazy, guys. We still have a baby dragon on the field. That was a very preemptive minor. I do not know if this man will be able to take our tower. And he's going to be dropping his three musketeers. I guess that he knows... I guess he knows something's up because I haven't used this spell yet. We're going to be dropping our NATO. We're going to be uh, saucing out a log. I hope when the golem explodes, it kills all the three musketeers. That would be awesome. It looks like it's going to happen. The night witch is going to get on the tower. The baby dragon is going to go in for the three crown and assert dominance. Can we get it, guys? We need one more hit. The burp of devastation. The tower is taken. That was a clean 3-0, guys. Let's get some hype in a recorded video, as always. <laughs> oh, I, I can't say that with a straight face. We got another game against someone that's immediately going to drop a Hog Rider at the bridge. No questions asked. This guy's a savage. So one of the big things that you want to do with this deck is when your opponent has their win condition out of cycle. Like, this dude does not have Hog Rider. He has so many cards out of cycle right now. I'm going to drop my Golem because he can't pressure opposite lane right now. Unless he has two win conditions, and then that guy's just a certified savage. But he is three cards away from his Hog Rider. He's down four Elixir. What is he going to do right now? So he's going to Fireball Golem. <laughs> what are those? Well, out of everything, I couldn't have predicted that, guys. There is no chance in heck that I predict that. He's got a mini pack and a cannon, so it's definitely a decent matchup for him. Maybe he'll be able to pull it out, but I... <laughs> This man fireball the golem, guys. That was the play. That was the maneuver. Oh man, I these are these are things that just cannot be questioned in life. He got back to his fireball and then he chief padded a uh, lumberjack right there too. So, guys, I think we're gonna assert dominance at three crown this man. Put him out of his misery. We are ready and poised to go drop our night witch to his hog rider. Where's your hog rider at? Because we know that you have it in cycle, my man. There it is. Predictions, Kappa. We're going to go drop our log as well. We actually ended up logging the Hog Rider closer to our, our tower. So that was definitely a slight misplay, but... Fireballing a golem. So let's see if he can do that again. Guys, this is how you bait out fireballs. You ready for this? Your bodies are not prepared for this. It is about to happen again. The fireball is about to commence. Okay, never mind. I, I'm Maybe he's cycling to his fireball, actually. Let's, uh, let's not get our hopes up. I hope he cycles to his fireball. Come on. Come on now. I, I really just want that fireball bait. This is actually a fireball bait deck now. <laughs> okay, so there's the cannon. We're going to be dropping our baby dragon. We're going to be dropping our night witch. And he's going to fireball it, but he actually got value that time. He ended up missing the mega minion though. And we're going to just cycle to another golem. And then we're going to three crown him. Because he used his cannon out of cycle. There's no way that he's actually going to be able to defend this. This guy's got an extraordinary long name. I don't understand. It's like some 2007, 007? I don't, I don't know. Alright, we're going to be logging the princess. 
Please go in for a goblin barrel so we can NATO it. Ah, oh, he's not about that life, is he? There's no way he expects that we have NATO, so I, I would be shocked if he doesn't go in for a goblin barrel if he's not running that deck. Okay, so he's running mortar. I hate mortar so much. We're going lumberjack opposite lane. Watch how the uh, mortar just decides to miss the lumberjack every single time. Pretty hysterical if you ask me. Mega Minion's going to go to town on top of that mortar. He's going to go in for a skill horde and then... We're going to NATO everything back. That's the, that's the benefit of having Baby Dragon NATO. You don't get finessed by a skill horde. Princess will end up actually dying to a log as well, so he's not in a very good situation. I'm going to wait and see, though. The, the thing that you always want to do is you want to wait to the last possible second when you're going to be a, a near 10 elixir and the princess gets closer to the bridge. Because if you log at the last possible second, maybe they'll drop an ice spirit, a goblin gang. Maybe you'll hit something else that you're trying to... Just getting lucky, you know? Maybe you'll get some extra value with that. I like giving my opponent the ability to mess up as many times as possible during a game. Feels great when they mess up a ton of times. Also, it really cripples them when they uh, make a play like that. So that miner really isn't... it's not really going to do anything. I don't care. It's going to do a stagnant damage of like 200, 300 damage when I have a baby dragon on it, max. And honestly, like 500 damage if I just ignore it, so... It's not like a hog rider, if left alone it will just take your tower. It's it's usually better when you're playing beatdown decks to just ignore those miners. That one bat, the hero. What do we call a bat that's a hero? I know we call the skeleton the little Larry that could, but I, I don't know a name for a bat. If you guys can figure out one, put it down in the comment section because I'm very eager to know. This mortar is just getting wrecked. As you guys can see, if you're running this deck on ladder, there is mortar everywhere. And there's no way that you lose the mortar with this golem deck, so. Highly suggest this deck for ladder as well. With that golem on the field, if he drops a mortar, that will be redirecting the mortar on top of that instead of the tower. We're going to be dropping our mega minion, we're going to be dropping our baby dragon. As I said before, guys, do not care about the miner. The miner will not be able to take my tower. If I deal with the mega, or if I deal with the minion horde, the minion horde is actually the serious threat. And we dealt with it, Miner did 500 damage, didn't really matter, and we took the dub. Good game, man. Let's move on to the next one, guys. Alright, guys, we got another game against a Royal King. A self-proclaimed Royal King. We're going to be dropping the pump in the middle as soon as we get the Elixir. We're at 10 Elixir, safe and sound. And he is not responding. What a dormant fellow. We're going to be logging that right quick. We ended up hitting the Miner and half the Goblin Gang right there. So definitely worthwhile for us. He's got Miner and he's got Goblin Gang. Looking like a Three Musketeer deck, probably. Could be something else, but that's what I would assume it is. Yep, there's the Battle Rim. As predicted. Predictions, Kappa. If you're dropping the Night Witch in the back, we could have dropped it up a little bit higher, but it's all good. Did not assume that Ice Golem to actually happen. Alright, so he pumps up. That's very interesting. I don't understand how he thinks he's going to be able to defend this. We have a baby dragon. He relied on the skill horde and it failed him. Uh, I'm sorry, you're not the Royale King anymore, sir. You're about to get uh, decimated by this lumberjack. It's going to go hard in the paint, knocking down that... Oh, it didn't. Really thought that was going to go towards the collector. But he might just get 3 crowned right now. He's going to drop his 3 musketeers. And this is going to be a pretty interesting push for me to deal with. I'm going to be dropping our mega minion on defense. Hmm. This is going to be interesting for sure. I'm going to be NATOing everything so then uh, my tower is actually able to hit the three musketeers. And then the, the gold mine explosions will wreck it. We're going to log on defense as well. And that was a pretty nice cleanup. So he's going to pump up. He's going to get very adventurous with me right now. So I can't pump up immediately because we know that he has Miner and Cycle. I have to actually wait for a Town Elixir so then I can go in for a Collector. And then I can actually make sure that when he goes in for a Miner, I'll have something to defend that. If he goes in for a Goblin Gang, I'm not going to really deal with it. Okay, he's a little bit he's a little bit frisky. He's, uh, he's a lot frisky, actually. That was an interesting maneuver. I don't understand why he went for Tower Damage right there, but some things are just better left, uh, better left unexplained. This guy's a Certified Savage. 
one of the harder matches for me sure, for sure. And he's going to go in for another pump. Yeah, he's, okay. Well, that's interesting. I'm going to go in for NATO on defense. Lumberjack. And I think that we'll actually end up defending this tower. We only have 19 seconds left. 17 seconds left. He's got to make sure he makes something big happen right here. I'm going to go in for a log. I'm going to try to NATO everything towards the baby dragon. And the baby dragon will clean it all up. Six seconds left. He's going hard in the paint with that battle ram pencil, whatever you want to call it. There is no way it breaks through. He's very angry. Sauced out the good game. And that's actually where I'm going to end today's video. Some of these games today were pretty whack. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you for everyone down below in the comment section for all your support and for suggesting me to run this golem deck. Let me know what deck you guys want me to cover for the next video. As always, thanks for stopping by and chilling with me today. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. Peace out.